Welcome back everyone. Today I'm going to show you how I paint my pox walkers here for my Death Guard army. Now I apologize, I'm not putting out very many videos, not a lot of terrain stuff like usual, but again with this newborn, I don't have a lot of time, so I'm only able to paint a few figures here or there, but I'm trying to record as much as I can to at least put some content out there. So here I'm going to give you an alternative paint scheme for painting your Death Guard in kind of a bluish purple drowned look. That's what I wanted something different than the usual kind of green rotted look for my uh, Death Guard pox walkers here. So I'm just going to run through the process and maybe it might uh, give you some ideas for making a, a kind of an alternative paint scheme for your own Death Guard. So the first thing I'm going to do with this model is I'm going to prime it white and then I'm going to use a bunch of different inks to put on kind of a base color onto the model. I like inks instead of washes for this because they have a little bit more pigment. They'll pretty much cover the white pretty well but you'll still be able to see some of the highlights and the higher uh, textures on the model as the ink will settle into uh, the recesses. So I'm um, going at all the extremities of my model and I decided I wanted kind of a necrotic look for my pox walkers. So I want kind of this idea that like the infection is spreading from their limbs into I guess their core of their body. So I'm just taking this black ink going over the, the face and the hands and the feet and then I'm going to take some blue ink mix it a little bit with that black ink to make a really dark blue and I'm going over the entirety of the skin tones and then I'm even going over some of that the black areas that I've just painted to give it uh, a little hint of blue. I, I really want it again I want a drowned look for these pox walkers so I want there to be a little bit of blue showing through. So what I'm going for is almost a blanchitsu kind of paint job. I'm using lots of inks and then I'm just doing kind of rough layering like I'm, I'm going over here rack hearth flesh and I mix in a little bit of blue ink into that Rackarth flesh, so it's it's pretty, uh, pretty thin layer. I'm just hitting most of the area of the skin, leaving only the deep recesses with that dark blue ink. And I'm just going quick. I'm going quick. I don't mind if brush strokes are kind of showing through. Just going quick, easy layers over the entirety of his skin, his his core here, the, his back with all the pus and the the boils and his legs and just going over with this Rackarth blue mixture. And then what I did is I mixed a little bit of, of uh, the pale white color into the Rackarth mixture and I'm going to start highlighting. Again, quick and easy here. I'm not going to worry about blending very much. I'm going to be going over it with inks to kind of mask or at least kind of hide the brush strokes that I'm doing here. It is still pretty thin too, so I can afford to be not too careful. If you can see, I'm just kind of really roughing it in. All right, that's the great thing about this kind of quick blanchitsu technique. And then I'm going and I'm taking pure pallid white flesh and I'm mixing in it's a little bit of blue ink and I'm really hitting the high highlights. All right, only, only the areas I think will be catching the most light. So it's just doing a, a quick triad on his skin. And why I, I kind of consider this a blanchitsu method is I'm using kind of a, a limited color palette. I'm using tones of blue grays and purples. I'm not going to have really much color pop into this. Colors are going to kind of blend into each other. I'm using a variety of thin washes over it. That's why I'm kind of calling it a, a blanchitsu technique here. And then I'm doing my final really edge highlighting here with some scar white mixed with some, um, some of that blue ink. All right, just a tiny drop of the blue ink there. You can barely even notice it. And that'll be kind of the final highlight on the skin to give it some pop before I go over it with a purple ink to really give kind of this this drowned dead look to the skin. Which kind of show where areas where I think the blood would be pooling in the dead skin. And if you don't know what Blanchitsu is, it's uh, John Blanche, a Games Workshop artist. He did a lot of the artwork for 40k and he has kind of this real kind of impressionistic uh, technique for painting miniatures on like, like Sam Lenz and the great... Uh, miniature painters now they'd kind of be like I don't know your Baroque Renaissance masters well John Blanche is I would say the impressionist of miniature painting so I like to experiment with this style I'm not very good at it but I like to experiment with it every once in a while so now that we have the skin all highlighted now I'm going to hit it with a purple ink all right and I watered down this ink a lot you'll notice inks have ton of pigment in there and in fact I probably should have watered it down a little more it'll even be a it'll tint some of the skin a little more than I wanted but in the end it'll look fine 
Um, but yeah, go ahead, get your purple ink out and water it down a bunch. And then I'm just hitting those deep recesses and kind of the, uh, the areas where I think blood would pool under the, under the armpits, uh, around the back of the knees and then the folds of the arms, things like that. Basically all the, all the different nooks and crannies of this model. I'm just putting this purple and I'm avoiding the really high areas that we highlighted with that, that pallid white flesh and the scar white. I'm, avo I'm avoiding those as best I can. If you get a little bit of ink on those areas, you can just, usually inks are easy to kind of wipe off with your brush. So, and this is also doing a good job of hiding kind of our rough layering that we did. You know, we weren't, we weren't trying to wet blend. We weren't really paying much attention to that at all. And this purple will distract your eye and kind of have those different colors blend together. And that's about all you have to do for the skin. All right. You can actually crank these out pretty quickly. You know, not as quickly as if you just only washed it and dry brushed it, but you know, other, other than that method, this is probably the next quickest way of painting these guys. And they have a ton of detail on them for being pretty small models. And so now I'm going to go back to those areas that I had put that black ink down on and I'm going to start highlighting them. So I, I want it to look pretty black and necrotic, so I'm using this dark reaper color which is a really dark gray blue. Uh, it's keeping kind of the, the blue theme we have going with this guy. So I, that's another reason I use Reaper here. And I'm just going over most of it, only leaving that pure black ink in the recesses. And then I'm going to go over it with a Vallejo Intermediate Intermediate Blue. It's kind of a nice gray blue color. And I'm just doing uh, the high highlights, the ridges on his face, his nose the top of his horn, on his head, his fingertips, things like that. Just a very subtle highlight. I don't want to go too crazy on black. If you highlight it too much, then it just looks gray. So here, just a nice, easy highlight. If you want, if you want to do what we did before, you can go over it and put that like purple wash over top of this to kind of blend the colors in a little bit better. I didn't do it. I thought, I thought it looked fine. But again, if you're worried about the, the blends or if it looks a little too sharp, the highlights, you can always go back over it with a wash of ink or a shade color. So after I highlight the, the, the necrotic black areas, I actually took some of that dark reaper color and I watered it down quite a bit, kind of made a wash out of it. And I'm just hitting those transition areas between the pale skin and the necrotic flesh to, you know, have a smoother transition. It looked a little too stark. This will look like, you know, the, the, the infection is slowly creeping into the into the flesh around the core. So uh, just another way to hide, hide some of those stark transitions. And now we're just finishing up the rest of the model. So I got, I got a bunch of ink on his, uh, I, what's left of his clothing here. So I'm just going over it with some gray. I'm, I'm going to go for like uh, here kind of this white grimy color that kind of matches with my Plague Marines. I have a you know, grimy, rusty plague marines, lots of greens and oranges and reds in there. So I'm going to have this kind of be like some grimy white leather that's been, you know, been uh, pulled through a swamp here. So I'm going over here now with a, a bone color. That's kind of my second layer, layering up to, uh, I'm going with almost a pure white with it. Um, again, I like uh, when I'm doing kind of these grimy colors, bone takes, uh, takes brown and the streaking grime uh, washes very well. It looks very realistic and dirty. Something about the there's a, a slight brown tint in the in the bone color itself, so it really lends itself well. So finally, I'm just highlighting the boots with some pure scar white. Not worrying too much about blending this in. I'm going to be covering it with a bunch of washes, so I just want really to rough in the highlights here, just the uh, the folds in the boot where I think light will be hitting it. And then we're going to go and we're going to start going over it with a, a variety of different washes. So first I'm going to hit it with that Vallejo streaking grime that I use for my Plague Marines. If you've seen that video, uh, it gives us this nice kind of, I don't know, uh, split pea soup, disgusting kind of look to it. So I just cover the entirety with that. Then while that's drying, I go ahead and I'm going to base coat his little rusted sword here with some Vallejo model air silver. And then I'm going to go in and I'm going to use my rust color, my streaking rust color from Vallejo. I'm also going to hit the, the deep folds in, uh, in his boots and on that little loincloth there and even go over his belt with it. 
and this really looks to me really John Blanche like he he liked to use a lot of these kind of reds and yellows disgusting colors uh, and then we go back and I'm gonna hit the deep recesses one more time with some Agrax Earthshade and that will pretty much finish up those uh, loin cloth areas and those boots and then I'm going to take some of that black uh, ink, mix a little bit of blue in there, and I'm going to go ahead and shade the entirety of the sword. And then once that dries, I'll get some of my typhus corrosion, hit all those kind of rusted out areas, those uh, areas that in which the sword's kind of eaten away by time and decay. And then once that dries, I'm going to go ahead and hit it here with some Rizza Rust and all those little pits on the edges of the sword didn't really give it that rusted out look. Typhus Corrosion and Rizza Rust are basically uh, a necessity for one another whenever you're using it. They, they match so well together. And then I'm gonna go back with that Vallejo Rust, that rust wash that I have, go to water it down a bit and just lightly coat pretty much the entirety of the sword just to give it this slight orange tint to the, to the metal. And then for one of our final steps here, I'm just going to take that green patina color. I can't remember the name of it. And I'm just going to hit the center of all those pits uh, to, again, further emphasize the rust that's gone on on this weapon. And then just going and taking my silver color again, and just edge highlighting the edges to make it still look, even though it's all rusted out, to still look sharp and menacing. And now our pox walker is complete. Did a little quick basing, put them on a nice little, little swampy base with some... Uh, the fern there and I think it turned out well you know I think he does he's a nice alternative paint scheme he looks like this kind of drowned zombie just emerging from a swamp anyways it, it'll match well with the other skin tones I've done in my death guard army anyways I hope you got something out of this video hope you enjoyed it if you did enjoy the video please hit the like button hit the subscribe button and I will see you soon with some more videos take care